in the same way that an effective author knows how to use printed letters and words on a page, if they know how to use those words effectively, they can cause imagery to come into your mind such that even though you're reading black and white letters on a page, you can see with vivid, vivid imagery what the author is trying to get you to see, to experience, to smell, and to feel. That is what is happening when you are harnessing the art of auditory seduction with your husband. You need to whisper in his ear what an author would write in a book. Hey everybody, it's Busy Mark and I am back with another video, but before we begin, I am pleased to announce that The Modest Fitting has officially launched a women's clothing boutique offering skirts and dresses that embody modesty, femininity, and beauty. To learn more about dresses like this one and others available for purchase, head over to themodestfitting.com. But without further ado, let's begin. So a couple weeks back, I had Gwen featured on the channel. We had a lovely conversation, um, and it was pretty much just about like how to be sexy, how to cultivate sex appeal in your marriage. And the conversation was just so good that I didn't get to everything that was on my list, and so I figured I would make a follow-up video with the remaining tips that weren't featured in that video and give that to you guys to kind of mull over and think about. Before I get into the new tips, I want to do a recap on what we talked about in the first video. And the first one was um, to dress well and to dress femininely. Um, the other tip was to keep yourself physically fit and your body sexually attractive. Another was to work on your self-confidence, to demonstrate your best physical assets in front of your husband to be a professional in the bedroom. Um, but now we're moving into some of the things that I didn't have time to go over. And the, one of the things I wanted to bring up is to invest in undergarments that are both functional, but also designed for sexual appeal. I think that sometimes as we just go into life and, and go through the different seasons of life, we can stop giving care to the things that we wear in general, but even the clothes that we wear underneath our clothes, our undergarments. And this is something that I'm talking to myself as much as I am talking to you all. Um, but there is something to be said about wearing undergarments that are functional. So um, they're gonna serve the purpose they need to serve, but also when you are in a state of undress and presenting yourself to your husband, the um, overall appearance is cohesive and it looks like it was thought out ahead of time and it just creates a very polished and really feminine and sexy look for your husband. Um, I probably will do a video that goes more into depth about appropriate undergarments for women to wear. I probably really, because it is a topic all in, in it to itself, but there is a way that we can just kind of um, start accumulating kind of cotton underwear and you just like throw on whatever bra is available and so the they don't always match they don't go together they're not made from similar fabrics are these things that are going to like jeopardize your health absolutely not but they are things that if you pay attention to them if you invest the time and the energy it's just a small adjustment that can just add a level of sexual appeal when you are in front of your husband he may not even be able to articulate why it matters and why it just looks a little different tonight but what it is is it's an intentional and a cohesive look in your undergarments when you are undressing in front of him that just kind of adds to just kind of like the sexual tension and the sexual anticipation that you guys can share as husband and wife the next thing that i wanted to add is to learn the art of auditory seduction um i i just dressed that up to make it, uh, to use different language to describe it, we would probably more likely hear it described as dirty talk. Um, I know that some people can get a little triggered when hearing the phrase dirty talk because they equate it with sin, which is why I have changed it to the art form of auditory seduction because there is something to be said about how the words we use can be effective. In the Bible, I think it even says like, and I'm paraphrasing, but like you can speak life or you can speak death and the power of life and death is in the tongue. And in a similar way, you can harness the, the, the power of the spoken word in the bedroom with your husband. So don't, so don't really sleep on the power of using words intentionally and strategically for the purposes of stirring desire in your husband. Um, this is something that I did not know how to do. Um, and so, because I am a nerd, I Googled it. I Googled, how do you do 
dirty talk. How do you cultivate the art of auditory seduction? And essentially, without going into too much detail, essentially what is happening when you are doing effective dirty talk is what you are doing is, is you are either, if you're in the midst of having sex with your husband or if you guys are apart, but you're building anticipation about what will happen when you guys come together, is what you're doing is you are describing in great detail what is either happening in the moment, how it makes you feel, or you are describing what you would like to happen and how you expect it to make you feel. And just in the same way that an effective author knows how to use printed letters and words on a page, if they know how to use those words effectively, they can cause imagery to come into your mind such that even though you're reading black and white letters on a page, you can see with vivid, vivid imagery what the author is trying to get you to see, to experience, to smell, and to feel. That is what is happening when you are harnessing the art of auditory seduction with your husband. You need to whisper in his ear what an author would write in a book. And when you get really good at doing that, it's a great tool to have when you and your husband may be separated for a time, whether it might be because he has a business trip or there's just something going on, learning how to cultivate and wield the power of auditory seduction. It, it adds a, a level of just sexual chemistry and anticipation that all it came from was just words. That's it just words. And so I think it's a wonderful tool to invest in learning how to cultivate and do it. I, like I said, I didn't know how I just went online, Googled it and learned. And not only is it something that you can do when you guys are apart, but it's something that can even be done in the midst of sexual intimacy. It's a way of, again, it's writing a book but reading it, speaking it in his ear as you guys are enjoying one another. And it really does heighten the sexual experience. The next thing that I would recommend that you try is sleeping together. And I mean, actually just lying there like sleeping um, in a state of undress. Sleep together naked one to two times a, a, uh, one to two times a week. Um, and it doesn't have to be rigid on a schedule. It's just something that you can do that's spontaneous and kind of just enjoy the feel of each other's skin and the warmth that you guys can offer to each other. And it doesn't even necessarily have to result in sexual contact, although it likely will, but it doesn't have to. There's just something that lying in each other's arms naked can do to just kind of like infuse sexual desire and even just sexual intimacy, even though sexual contact is not exactly being made. And I think that the part of part of the reason why I think that that's effective is because when we follow the Bible, especially as women, as it relates to um, adorning ourselves in modesty publicly, what that means that that is that for the for the lion's share of our lives, we're going to be covered. We're going to be rightly covered when we're out in public and in front of a bunch of people, our bodies are going to be kind of, um, out of sight and intentionally so. And so there's a level of just comfortability and vulnerability that can be experienced when you really just take everything off in front of your, your marriage partner and you guys just lie there in each other's arms. It's kind of a way that what was taken from humanity in the garden between Adam and Eve where they were able to be naked and unashamed and just be there in each other's presence that was taken away when sin entered in and we needed to be clothed and and there's a sense of insecurity you can kind of even if only for a night and if for a moment you can set that aside and just be comfortable and safe and secure in each other's naked presence and that moment um, can kind of this the intimacy that's established there can translate into other um, more intensely intimate moments in the marriage. Something that I think I've stated probably on this channel before, um, but just for the sake of thoroughness, make sex a priority. Um, 
plan and set aside and reserve regular time for sexual contact and make sure that you go into those situations with your body having been prepared for sexual contact. Um, I think now it's probably been several months, but I made a video about how to prepare the body for sex. And essentially one of, there was a lot of things that I mentioned in that video, but one of the primary takeaways is that um, you should always come with a body that is at minimal, at, um, at, at the minimum, bathed and clean. And so I think it's good practice for wives to shower you know, at least once in the morning and then if you can shower again in the afternoon, excellent. If not, at least just wash up, just wash um, yourself before getting into bed so that in the event that sexual contact is made, your body is prepped and prepared for that so it is a pleasant experience for everyone involved. Things that we wouldn't, even dare do with um, acquaintances and with associates and with people in public like you know going out smelling not really the freshest if if we knew that we had body odor we would likely wash and um, perfume ourselves or so, whatever it is right like you would always put your best foot forward but sometimes the courtesy that we extend to strangers and the public we don't extend that same courtesy to our spouse. And so in addition to making sex a priority, you should make sexual preparedness a priority in your marriage. Does that mean that you need to try to be something that you're not? No, it just means, would you go to a job interview not really smelling the freshest? Would you go in to give somebody a hug knowing that you haven't washed on your, under your arms and you're not wearing deodorant? You probably wouldn't do that because you wouldn't subject someone else to that and you also wouldn't want the embarrassment and i'm saying what i'm encouraging is for women to have that same level of awareness that they have with strangers have that with your husband in the same way that you would wash up and you would brush your teeth and you'd put on deodorant and you'd make sure that your body is clean and at least smelling neutral extend that same courtesy to your husband and in addition to doing that always make priority uh, make sex a priority set aside the time reserve even if it doesn't the way that i handle it is i set aside and reserve a time for sex even if we don't take advantage of that time each and every time i set it aside i set it aside nonetheless so that whatever happens at least the option is there that we can do this there's availability if one or both of us is desiring that the other tip that i wanted to put out there is to design your bedroom as a place for sexuality and sensuality um, I think, um, again, when we get into the hustle and bustle of life, it can be difficult to just stay on top of the things that we ordinarily would do without even anyone telling us to. And there is something to be said about a space that is clutter-free, that smells nice, that's inviting. It's actually part of the appeal of hotel rooms. When you, A lot of people like to go to hotels because it's a place that's always gonna be clean because they have paid housekeeping. The beds are always gonna be made when you come back in. It may smell fresh, it may even perfuming, perfume it depending on the way that they handle their, um, their rooms, but that's part of the appeal of going to hotels because it's a clutter-free, clean, inviting space you should work to create that same kind of environment at home. Your bedroom should be a place that's inviting, that's clean, that's tidy, that's organizing. There shouldn't be a ton of stuff piled onto your bed. No, no unfolded laundry or laundry waiting to be washed should be stored on the bed. The bed is to be cleared, it's to be organized, it's to be inviting. And I think I mentioned in one of the videos, I don't remember which one, but I did recommend that as long as you and your husband don't have any allergies or anything like that, perfume your bed. It doesn't have to be an obnoxious smell. It could just be one spritz of something light and clean. And it's just it just adds to the room being a place of an o and oasis of sensuality and sexuality. I know that when we have, when we are mothers of young children, sometimes staying on top of the cleanliness in the home can be difficult. And while I recommend that effort and energy should be um, spent to keep the home in general neat and tidy, if you're just in that season where it's not possible to keep the house as clean as you would like, 
you gotta at least keep the bedroom in order. You gotta at least keep the bedroom clean. There may be Legos and blocks and toys in the family room, but the bedroom should be a place that's always kept neat, tidy, inviting, and ready, um, available for sex to take place between you and your husband. And even if sex doesn't take place, even if you guys just for a moment, like I said before, you just lay in the bed and you lie there naked with each other in a moment of peace and quiet. The room should be ready to receive you either for sexuality or sensuality. The other thing that I wanted to put before you to consider is to make it a point to touch your husband in ways that are reserved for you and only you as his wife. Um, it goes without saying that there are some just level, like we have some kind of, you know, unspoken societal decorums about how we will and will not touch each other. What's appropriate touching? What's inappropriate touching? There's, um, there are, there is a way of hugging that's appropriate for friends and there's a, and there's a kind of embrace that lovers will, will exercise. There's a way that we can greet um, someone we're meeting for the first time and then there's a way that we greet someone that is a dear um, loved one that we haven't seen in a long time there are just different rules about how we can and cannot relate to each other and that often governs physical touch there is a way that you are the only person that you can touch your husband because you are his wife something um, just to give some examples you are his wife, so it's appropriate for you that if he's just kind of standing there, it's totally right and acceptable for you to run your hands underneath his shirt and up and down his chest. It's just a way of expressing affection and even desire. That would not be a way that anyone other than you could touch him. Another way that you might um, touch your husband in a way that someone else couldn't, couldn't if you have um, long nails, you have nice long nails, you may give your husband a little, a little scalp massage, just kind of like the way that that feels, that feels nice. Um, that would be a way that only you and, and you only could touch your husband. You wouldn't really find another person running their fingers through your husband's scalp, that would be weird. Another way that you may be able to just demonstrate uh, physical familiarity and even sexual knowledge of just your husband because you guys are husband and wife is you may just rub your fingers through his beard, like give his beard a nice massage what you know you got you get the idea you understand what i'm saying that there are ways that you and only you can touch your husband because he is your husband and because you are his wife and so what i would encourage you is to utilize that kind of exclusive and reserved form of physical touch in your marriage do it and do it often it just reinforces the fact that we are a sexual pair we have sexual knowledge of each other I am allowed to stir in you desire for sex. Do that because it does kind of, um, it does just boost the chemistry in the marriage. And while we did touch on this a little bit um, before, the last tip I have is keep a clean home. I know that there are different seasons and if you can't keep a clean home, at least keep a clean bedroom. But better than a clean bedroom is a home that is clean. And not because necessarily that cleanliness is an aphrodisiac per se, but it is true that mess and messiness in general is a kind of wet towel. Um, and it does detract from, mess tends to detract from beauty in general. It's hard to recognize the beauty of a thing in the midst of chaos. In a similar way, it's hard to, I, I think, it's hard to cultivate feelings of arousal, sexual desire, and even appreciation for beauty in the midst of clutter and mess. So I would recommend that you get it as much as you can, get it under control. Because not, it's, again, it's not that cleanliness puts people in the mood, but messiness can take people out of the mood. And cultivating sexual appeal and sexuality in the marriage is, is as much about doing certain things to boost the sensuality and sexuality as much it is as it is about taking out hindrances that can detract from sexual appeal and sexual desire in marriage. And there is something about if you are not so focused on how the house is in disarray and how it's in, in shambles, it leaves mental room and mental space for you to, to then focus that mental energy for other activities that might be both 
uh, enjoyable and pleasurable for both you and your husband. I hope that you guys found these tips to be helpful. If you have other suggestions about how a married woman might infuse and encourage sexuality and sensuality in the context of her marriage with her husband, would you leave those suggestions in the comment section below? As always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.